Hey everyone, Adam Learns project number three is now complete. I learned about Minecraft modding and plugins and I ended up making a game that we called Animal Royale. It's a game where you control sheep via Twitch chat and you shoot TNT at each other. I think it's really cool and I want to show you guys a demo of it. This plugin is a little bit different from other Minecraft plugins you may be used to and that you don't actually need to even have a copy of Minecraft to play it. The interface to the game is through Twitch chat. I'll connect to the server here. And the first thing that the game does is it finds a random spot in the world that is not ocean to set up an arena. So we can see that I've joined the game. It is currently setting up the arena right now. And this uses the normal Minecraft terrain generation that you see. We put a border around the whole arena here so that we can tell where the boundaries are. And now through Twitch chat, I can do something like join red to join from my first account and join blue to join from my second account. You can see that this plopped two sheep into the world. And if we didn't know where we were, we could do something like identify yellow. And what will happen is it will shoot a yellow firework and make the sheep jump up. The way that the game works is that rounds are taken to throw TNT at each other. And the coordinates for this are a little bit confusing. So I'll just write this down and I can explain this later maybe or include a picture. The first one is the angle that I'm using. The second is the pitch. The third is the power. And the fourth is the amount of time that the TNT will live for. So you can see that this sheep over here just aimed at this sheep, at least a little bit, it's going to be off. And then when the match starts, every so often TNT will be flung from each sheep in the arena. So it's about to start. We can see a scoreboard was set up between my two players and it launched TNT and it actually hit. That was pretty good. The amount of time in between rounds shrinks as the match goes on. So you will eventually start shooting TNT once every second. It'll go very fast. And there are special abilities like you could teleport and I can specify an angle here. So negative 90 will be to the left. So we can see that sheep just moved and that's perfect. Now we can see what the scoreboard is like. That is the general game, but this of course took place with two players. Given that it's on Twitch chat, you can have matches that are as big as as many viewers as you have. So I'll show you some of those now too. Here's a match that took place live on Twitch on the final day of the project, day five. At this point, we were just playing. We weren't really developing it anymore. And I've got the video playing out at quadruple speed so that we can see how a match plays out in totality as opposed to focusing on the fine details. This game is very chaotic. You'll see throughout this video that some sheep just fall into the water and die that way. And some sheep at the bottom right of the arena are on top of a tree. There is a lot of luck of the draw in this game, even though there are ways that you can influence the outcomes. I'm about to show Twitch chat in real time so that you can see how chaotic Twitch chat also was. Here it is. You can see that a lot of people are using the where command in addition to the TNT command. This is one of the big problems of the game. It's very tough given that you only have my spectator view to see where exactly you are in the world, even with the where or the identify commands. That's part of the unfairness and the chaos of it. At this point, the game has now progressed for five minutes and you can see lava falling from the sky. I'll slow down the video a bit so you can see what it's like. This was intended to speed up the rest of the match. This is for when either players are idle or they just can't seem to aim the TNT at each other. I think it adds this really fun element to it and also of course makes it so that people can join the next match. You may be wondering how you can play this game too. The short story is that you can go to my Patreon and you can subscribe at $10 a month and you get access to the code. You can build this yourself. You can host this on your own stream. There are some features missing and there are definitely bugs there. I think that some people from my own community will probably develop a little bit more of it. And then maybe you can find a stream out there where this is playable. Again, you wouldn't even need to have Minecraft in that case. The rest of this video, I'm going to talk about what I learned in this and maybe how you can get started with Minecraft modding as well. First of all, this is going to be a summary of what we've done, but if you want to watch the full 40 hour process of how I researched and coded this myself, I need to plug this, but you can subscribe at the $5 a month level on Patreon and you can get those VODs on YouTube. Or if you're watching this within the next, say, 40, 50 days of this being out, you can go to twitch.tv slash adam13531 and see the VODs there. I was a professional developer before starting any of this Minecraft modding. But I heard from a lot of people in chat that the way they got into coding was via Minecraft. It's a great way to keep you entertained while you're still learning coding at the same time. Despite my starting experience, I hardly knew anything about Minecraft itself. And I've played Minecraft for tens of hours, but I've never used a command block even in the game. 
So the very first thing we had to decide is which version do we want to use, the Java version or the Bedrock version? I've got some comparisons here. The summary is that I wanted to pick what was more popular because I figured it would have more support online and more resources. So I went with the Java version. The same lack of knowledge applied to modding itself. I thought there was just a Minecraft mod and nothing else. It turns out there are data packs, there are mods, and there are plugins. What I wanted to do to start with was just use data packs. So I made my first data pack, and I'll apologize to those who know Jason and see this garbage at the bottom here. This is called cow.json, and all it does is it makes cows drop diamonds instead of leather or beef, and it makes them draw quite a lot of diamonds. There are five rolls for five to 10 each. This is a really simple data pack that I could make, spawn a cow into the world, and see them drop 20 diamonds at a time. From there, I wanted to learn about plugins, but again, I didn't know anything about the environment of these. I'd heard of Forge, I'd heard of Bucket. I didn't really know the differences. I've got my notes that I can share out to supporters of the show as well, so you can find out all of the details. But what I understood is that Bucket used to be popular for plugins, and it's been largely replaced by Spigot, and then Paper Spigot improved the performance of that. So we ended up making plugins using Paper Spigot. Also, what I showed earlier, Animal Royale, is purely a plugin. That means that you can connect with the vanilla Minecraft client without any modifications to it as long as the server has the plugin enabled. I did not jump right into Animal Royale though. What I did at first was this plugin to create pillars. What this plugin did is when you placed a block, it would produce that same block in a pillar about 10 high on that target. What you're watching was a video of me coding this live on stream. I've sped this up quite a lot, but I did not have the experience with interacting with Paper Spigot and their API or too much about Minecraft. And we can see here, I'll slow the video down. We can see here that I got these pillars working. Not that this plugin is great or anything, but it was cool to experience. It's a good way to dip your feet in without actually getting overwhelmed by something. The last major thing I wanna show you is some of my actual code that I have here for creating sheep or for launching TNT. Let's start this from the beginning. Earlier in the video, you saw that I typed exclamation point join and then red into Twitch chat. So how does that happen in the code? Let's find out. Here we create a Twitch chat client and this uses my credentials which I have stored in a secret file. And we have an event for a channel message. So when you just type into the channel and then another event for a whisper when you type a private message. Let's look at the first one, which is on chat message. What this does is it gets the sender information and the message that you sent and it calls in the handle chat message. Okay, looks good so far. If we scroll down here and I didn't add a proper command handler, so you see a lot of string comparisons here. We see this, if the command is equal to join or I have the color command as well, then we call the on join event. Well, let's go down to that function and we can see here something that is a little bit interesting. Okay, sure, there's color parsing code to figure out what color you typed and turn it into dye so that we can dye the sheep eventually. But what's interesting here is this, bucket.getscheduler.runtask. The way that you interact with bucket, spigot, paper spigot is through the server thread. So any modifications you do to the game world, whether it's placing a block, creating an entity, maybe teleporting your character, that all needs to happen on their thread. If I were to just call this code down here to create a sheep without doing that on their thread, I would run into an error. And I believe that error looks something like this that I have here. It says something like player teleport event may only be triggered synchronously. So this is what indicates to you that you should be doing this on their server thread. So we'll go back to the code here. What this calls is create sheep for player. So let's see, this is actually surprisingly easy to use their interface to create sheep, to shoot TNT, I'll go through this code at a high level. What we're doing is we have our arena and that is what is denoted by the location here. We then add a random offset because the location of the arena is one spot and we wanna create the sheep anywhere in a rectangle. It's possible that the Minecraft terrain generation had lava or liquid at that spot that we generate for the sheep. So in that case, what we do is we find that lava or liquid, and then we turn it into concrete. Actually, it's the block above it that turns into concrete. That way, if there's more lava or water around you, that that wouldn't also hurt you. Then what we do is we set a lot of properties on the sheep. Sheep normally move by default. So what we had to do here is set them to be not aware. That way they wouldn't move any longer. Otherwise, that could mess up your targeting in the game. 
And then the final thing that we do is we get where you are in the arena in a human readable string. What that means is it'll say something like you're in the top left or you're in the center of the arena and we'll send that to the player over Twitch. That way they can figure out where they are without having to see exactly where their sheep dropped into the world. The other function that I wanted to show you guys is the creating TNT part of this. You saw earlier that TNT command that will actually rotate your sheep and make them pitch their heads upward. What that is doing is it's setting their own vector or their direction. So whatever direction they're facing is where the TNT is going to shoot from. And that's exactly what we do here. And then we multiply that vector by how much power they specified from zero to 100 so that they can either lay the TNT right next to them or shoot it far away. All of this code was relatively easy to figure out. And if you type something like TNT dot, you can see all of the functions that exist on the TNT entity. So this can help you figure things out without even needing to read documentation necessarily, although there is pretty good documentation for this too online. Thank you for watching this video and thanks to all of the supporters of the show. The next project is making an NES ROM and we've already started that now. There are a lot of other projects on deck. I really hope you'll join me on Twitch. I've got the link below in the description. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.